Good evening, folks, and welcome to Let's Play Games West Virginia. I'm Kevin, and this is Pokemondays. It was a weirdly exciting week for Pokemon. I actually wasn't uh, too into it at first, um, but then there was a surprise punch at the end, which, if you were playing it all during the Psychic event, uh, you know what I'm talking about, and if not, you'll definitely see it today in the video. So, as we know, the game has shifted a lot in the last month, changes in X-Raids, changes in research tasks, and this was the first week that uh, Suicune was the new research task uh, chance to catch Pokemon. So, as you know, these are usually legendary Pokemon that you don't see in the wild, and it's a short period of time to be able to get them. If you can plan your month correctly, uh, you can usually end up to get four, but there's a couple months in the year where you can end up to get five, and October should be one of those. So let's get started. So one of the things that I'm on a quest for is a shiny Magikarp. If there's a Magikarp raid, I am showing up. I really, really, really want a red Gyarados. Magikarp is a slow grind to evolve. It takes 400 candies. Uh, so if you're using pineapple berries, that gives you a little bit of an edge, but it's still a really slow grind. So I've been showing up at just about every Magikarp raid that I have the free time to do so. Still don't have it yet. Um, I may have a trade lined up here in the next couple of weeks. So if I can get one via you know trade or hook or by crook, I don't really care. I want one of these red Gyarados. So I um, think I may end up trading for one. Uh, I've seen some people say, so the catch rate for shinies is really low. It's about 1 in 470. Um, but of course, that's that's a percent chance, right? So it doesn't mean if you, if you try to catch 400 Magikarp that you're going to end up with a shiny each time you click on one, you have this 1 in 400, 1 in 500-ish chance to catch. So I've seen a lot of people on the internet reporting that they caught, finally caught a shiny Magikarp on their 1300th catch, which I don't have anywhere near that many. Uh, so it's just a, a pretty rare find, but I'm still hoping that I can get one. The thing with some of the uh, Magikarp raids is that, or any of the raids actually, uh, you don't know that you're going to get a shiny or a regular one until after the raid is over and you have the opportunity to catch. So uh, like this raid, for instance, uh, could have been either as far as I know uh, when the raid started and until you get to this catch screen, you don't know what you're looking at. So as we can see, this is a regular Magikarp. So still on the quest for my my shiny so I can get a red Gyarados, but not there yet. But I'm still using those pineapple berries uh, you, that doubles the number of candies you get uh, for a catch. And uh, since it's such a slow grind, that, that really does help. We have a, a couple of different uh, splices of video footage from me this uh, past week and from Heather. Uh, she couldn't be here this evening, but she sent in some video footage, so we'll look at some of her stuff later uh, in the show. Uh, if you've been paying any attention, you'll know that uh, we recently ended a large event where uh, a lot of the Gen 1 Pokemon are going to be phasing out. Today is the last day for the 7K egg event. Any eggs that you open today... Uh, should still have those rare regional Pokemon, but this is the, the very last day for that. So if you haven't got your Kangaskhan or Mr. Mime and you're in North America yet, or even your Farfetch'd, uh, it's time to maybe start leveraging some trades. So yeah, I'm still on this quest for, for Magikarp. As you can see, we're here in another Magikarp raid. Um, we've noticed an interesting trend in that the, the app seems to be favoring Agron. Uh, for many many Pokemon so even as you can see that these were not very effective attacks now the Stone Edge charge move is effective um, but we've noticed that even in times where the canonical type for the Pokemon uh, isn't effective the Aggrons are getting chosen so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there but uh, you definitely need to pay attention to the move sets of the Pokemon to make sure that if you're using the recommended Pokemon they're actually helpful for you in these level one Magikarp raids I mean it, it's a level one raid and if you're if you've been playing for any length of time and you're you know in the 30 to 40 range, uh, any Pokemon you choose practically, uh, you're going to complete a level 1 raid by yourself easily, but you might end up in a level 3 or 4 raid and not be able to hack it. So last week I attempted a level 3 raid by myself, and if I'd had an additional 40 seconds or so, I probably could have had it, but I ended up not, uh, not beating the raid at all um, because I went with the recommended Pokemon set, and they were just a little bit too slow for uh, the the Pokemon in question, which was a Jinx raid. So if you are visiting your Pokestops frequently, you will get a free raid pass each day. Uh, the raid pass is what allows you to battle in a gym that has a special Pokemon for a limited time up uh, to get that one. And the raid Pokemon have better IVs than 
generally than the ones you catch. And of course there are outliers. Sometimes you'll catch uh, in a Pokemon in the top 20 or even the top 10%, um, but all of your raid Pokemon are pretty much going to be 80% IVs or above. If you've been watching the channel, uh, this or the LPG underscore Kevin channel at all, uh, we've been talking about IVs pretty much every episode. It's this hidden stat that goes along. Uh, you can either figure it out by hand or use a third-party app that helps you figure out uh, what those IVs are. And that tells you the max range at full power for the CP of that particular Pokemon, and at the very extremes represents about an 8% swing. So if you've been watching the videos, also you know that I'm uh, deeply engaged in a long-running joke for the Pidgey Patrol, and I am IV hunting Pidgeys. So uh, basically, I, everyone I run into in town, I ask them to save me their Pidgeys, and I'm trading pretty much anything that I can to get a hold of Pidgeys. At this point in the week, um, all of the Pidgeys I have in the Pidgey Patrol are 80% IV or above, uh, which is pretty decent. Uh, this time, a month ago, they were all like 40% or below. Pidgeys are not terribly high IV Pokemon, um, but I'm committed to this bit. So my eventual goal is to get six 100% IV Pidgeys and to max them out. And the Pidgey Patrol uh, group, will, oops, sorry, group will be complete at that point in time. So this looks like uh, the Jinx raid that I mentioned earlier. So I went with the stock... Uh, set up the app chose, which was basically a bunch of agrons and a golem. And these guys are just not fast enough. Even though their attacks are super effective, uh, the attack speed is just not enough to, to really hack it. So in retrospect, if I had this one to do again, I would probably lean towards more fire type Pokemon. Um, I do have a bunch of Entei from last month, uh, as well as Vaporeon and some other fire Pokemon. Um, I'm walking around with a Char uh, Charizard as a buddy that I recently evolved, so I would probably lean towards fire types uh, could I, were I to do this again. So as you can see, uh, the timer's moving down, and I'm going through Pokemon, and the Jinx is just not moving. So there was a point in time in the meta where Jinx was a really good Pokemon to have that was a good gym defender. That time has kind of passed. There isn't really a, a whole lot of use for Jinx uh, anymore in the meta, but uh, I still don't have any really high IV ones. I had a bunch at one point because they were all over the place, and I caught some when I was in Scotland, and I caught a bunch here. And uh, so I was uh, walking past this raid on campus this week, and I thought, oh, well, it's just a, a level three raid. I should be able to, to hack that myself and do a raid for the day. But as you can see, uh, that turned out not to be the case. So when you're doing these raids, um, I've actually, actually recently changed my uh, but screen tapping button strategy. So you can tap anywhere on the screen to do your fast move, which is your basic run-of-the-mill everyday move. And then where you can see now there's a slightly grayed out shadow uh, in the lower central portion of the screen. Now it's lit up with a charge move, and that is a more powerful move. So these days I'm actually just tapping right over that charge move spot, and then when the charge move is ready to go, uh, it sort of fires automatically. Previously I was tapping somewhere else so I could see that charge move, and the, uh, the result was I was missing them sometimes and not using them because I would get wrapped up in the animation or talking with people who were around me. So. Lately I've changed that and I'm actually now tapping just right over that all the time and basically letting the, the app switch for me by not having to move my finger where I'm tapping. So to engage in the raid battles doesn't really require a whole lot of skill. Uh, choosing your Pokemon team may, especially if you're paying attention to all of the different moves, but here you're basically just repeatedly tapping to attack and it's, I guess, the mobile game version of button mashing, but uh, so, yeah, that's, that's the deal. So that's more likely to get high IV Pokemon, uh, more likely to get experience. If you're raiding with people who are local to you, you will build your friendship levels faster. Uh, if you want invitations to X raids, you need to raid at X raid eligible gyms. So my town has three or four of them. Two are in parks on opposite sides of the uh, town. And whenever we're nearby, you know, we try to stop and hit one of those raids. Um, especially now that with Deoxys, with four different forms, uh, we definitely want to keep those X-Raid invites up. So, time was up. I didn't complete it. Uh, I did have an egg hatch right at the end, which was a little bit strange. I uh, didn't complete the raid, and that was it. So, missed out on that Pokemon. So, these are all 7k eggs. The best source for these is to get them from gifts from friends, but again, that event is over. The typical joke was the uh, eggs have been mostly rats and cats, so uh, Alolan, Rattata, and Meowth, but through a special period you had the opportunity to get Pokemon that you hadn't otherwise seen. 
So this is uh, Heather's shiny Magikarp that she caught. Uh, lucky her. Hmm. Very lucky her. So hopefully this will be me before too long. Oh man. And it looks so good. So if you remember Gyarados, he's typically a, a blue color, and the red one just looks total, totally awesome. So that's my, my shiny goal. That's the probably the shiny Pokemon that I want above all others. Um, I really would like to have this red Gyarados, and I'm looking forward to it. And it has two dark moves, the one that Heather just evolved, uh, which will definitely be useful for her. So the next scene is an app error, and I wanted to give folks who may have a lower seizure threshold or a history of epilepsy a warning. There's going to be some flashing on the screen, and I'll let you know when that is over. So, as you know, app issues are super common uh, for Pokemon Go, but this was a particularly weird one. This uh, flashing, pulsating, uh, concentric circle dealio, and a flashing of the top screen is not something either of us had seen before. And it was totally a weird error, and I haven't seen anything like it pretty much even anywhere on the internet. So, uh, typically when you get these fatal app errors, you have to uh, restart the app and hopefully hop back in. If it's happening during a raid, which happens sometimes for special events, it can be particularly frustrating, but this was just a one-time one weird event, and uh, all of the flashing issues on the screen should be over by now, any uh, ones that are not typical to the game. So here we're just uh, going around town. These are not X-rayed eligible gyms, but they're in areas that we travel and pass through pretty frequently. Uh, so we stopped here to uh, tear down this yellow gym and uh, install some Pokemon. Again, one of the things that you can do is you can uh, collect coins, and coins you can use in the in-game store. You can either convert actual currency to coins and buy stuff, or you can win up to 50 coins in a day by holding gems for about eight hours. Now you're maxed out at 50, so if you've got Pokemon in 10 different gems, the most you're gonna get is 50 for that day. And if you happen to put a Pokemon in a gym that's pretty inaccessible, you might end up staying there a really long time, and you actually can't recall them. So someone else on another team, uh, there's you know three main Pokemon teams, uh, has to kick you out. So it depends on where you are and, and how the players are. Some uh, players uh, try to manage a little bit and they'll check and say, okay, well this guy's been in there for 17 hours so he probably wants out and probably wants his coins because it's the end of the day. And then they'll go ahead and kick that gym. Other players are, you know, it's it's a competitive aspect of the game. Um, some people get upset, but it's just how the game goes. You might be in there for two minutes and then someone might just be waiting and kick you out and you basically get nothing for that time period. Uh, you can get as little as one coin for some time held, and I'm not sure exactly how long that takes, but um, it's it's more than three minutes, as we found out this week. So Slacking is an interesting Pokemon for the gym. His uh, fast move uh, does no damage, um, which is the, the normal, typical move, um, but the charge move can do quite a bit. So the trade-off is you, uh, well, you're not actually tapping if you're in the gym, but that Pokemon is spinning up uh, that charge move, and then it uses it and uh, the charge move is much more damage than the zero damage of its regular move. Choosing which Pokemon go in the gym uh, can can be an issue. It depends on how, kind of what level you're playing at. Uh, Snorlax is always good. Chansey is a good gym, uh, gym defender currently. For a while, Jinx was, but that's kind of less true. Um, what is kind of fun is you'll see themes. So at one point this week, um, we tried to start a couple themes. We had a shiny evolutions in one. And, as we talked about, uh, the beginning of this month was the first time that you can catch... Oh, sorry. Uh, this is actually Heather's last. So, uh, the first time you can catch the new Pokemon Suicune uh, for Legendary Raids. But, uh, as what happened here, that actually didn't kick off until October 1st, which it was expected. But it was 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So, if you'd been saving up... Uh, those research tasks, as Heather had been, and uh, I think she tried to do this around, let's say, well, it says 1.30, and, you know, she just missed out. It was, it was the wrong Pokemon, and she was pretty bummed out because she'd actually uh, skipped a day of play to get everything lined up, and it just, just didn't work out for her. Um, but I had waited until later in the day, uh, so she had gotten there uh, before me, and I was a day or two ahead. So here it is. Here is Suicune, the newest legendary member to Pokemon Go. Uh, Suicune is a water type. I believe the name is uh, Japanese uh, and has to deal with uh, water, and which fits with the Pokemon's type and its uh, and its sort of story in the game. 
So again, as you uh, when you raid, you one of the things that you get back are golden raspberries, and they make the chance of catching a Pokemon much higher. And uh, those shouldn't get hoarded. You should use them judiciously. Um, but they're definitely good to have. And uh, in this case, I was trying to use one while I threw Ultra Ball after Ultra Ball after this guy. I was just uh, it was early in the morning, and I was not on my my Pokemon throwing game. Hmm, that's weird. I'm pretty sure I was sitting in my living room when. We did that, but either way. So uh, the game is speed locked. So if you are the passenger in a vehicle and you're playing, uh, the speed lock is somewhere around 17 or 20 miles an hour. Uh, obviously, the game wants to discourage people from playing while driving. And uh, the way it does that is by speed locking the game. So for a long time, uh, there wasn't even this option of I'm a passenger. Uh, it was just the Pokemon wouldn't spawn and you couldn't spin stops. So. Uh, they've changed this, so I'm a passenger now. I think, uh, I'm pretty sure Twitch, uh, however, may have some rules about playing while driving, but uh, Niantic has been concerned about the safety of their players, and speed locking the game is one of those things. And that actually carried over from Ingress. I think the Ingress speed was actually slower than that. It may have been 10 miles per hour. Um, but it's nice that there's still an opportunity, so if you are a passenger in the vehicle, uh, you can hit those stops. So this was an event that was kind of short, uh, shortly announced. It was the Psychic uh, event. There were going to be increased spawns of Slowpoke, uh, Drowsy, um, Spoink, and uh, Execute. They were pretty much everywhere. They were the main spawns for the period. However, if you go ahead and read through that whole thing, you'll see there was an announcement for a shiny Drowsy, which is super cool. But there was no mention of this! Another Pikachu with a hat. So, uh, I am totally down for Pikachus with hats. Uh, this was the Psychic logo. And what was neat is the event also uh, would allow you to, um, in the store, get a Psychic hat or t-shirt. And those were without cost um, in coins or other currency. They were just freely available. So, Pikachus with hats are always fun. There's been an Ash hat, a birthday hat a Halloween hat, a summer hat, which kind of looked more like a Crocodile Dundee hat with sunglasses. Um, I'm missing any Santa Halloween summer. And now this uh, Psychic uh, hat. So that's pretty cool. If you uh, are into acquiring badges, and you can view those from the bottom left profile, uh, one of them is uh, Pikachu Fan. And the there's three levels for the badges. Uh, the first one is not terribly difficult to get. I think it's three Pikachu off if I remember correctly. The second one is 100, and the third gold level is 300 Pikachu. Now, it's not candies, so using a pineapple berry, although useful, doesn't actually help you acquire those medals, but uh, you still have to catch 300 Pikachu, which is not easy. So I'm somewhere around 150, I think, after this short event. Um, Heather actually hit her 300 Pikachu goal, um, and so unlocked that gold medal uh, during this event, which was pretty cool. But as far as I saw, Ni Niantic didn't... Uh, even drop a hint that there was going to be an additional Pikachu with a hat. So that was a total surprise. We were actually sitting at home and someone texted in a screenshot. Uh, we have a group that we uh, locally, all the players are in. Not all the players, but a subset of them. And they were like, look what I just found this Pikachu with a hat. And we're like, oh man. So we were sitting on the couch and we just sat, uh, sat down to dinner. And so we both popped uh, an incense at the time, uh, which increases the spawn rate of uh, Pokemon around you and kind of attracts them to your area. And they worked for a half an hour. And in that half an hour period, each of us caught one. And then I eventually caught a second one, uh, which I evolved. So one of the fun things about the Pikachus with a hat is when you evolve them, they keep their hat. So uh, the only thing that this one didn't have, I don't think there were any uh, Pichus, the baby version of Pikachu, which was released later, uh, with a hat. So some of them, like the summer hat, uh, the Pichu did have them. But as far as I remember, uh, this one did not for this event. So with all of these psychic Pokemon that were around, it was a good chance to uh, do some evolutions if you have not done that yet. Uh, the Execute to the Executor, uh, whether that's the Alolan type or the regular type, were available. Uh, Drowsy and Slowpoke. So I actually had, I didn't have either of these Slowpoke evolutions. One requires an additional item, the Kingstone, and the other you can just do regularly. So I was really glad this event happened. I was actually able to get both of those. Um, although the slow bro, I was actually able to catch wild during this period. I didn't even have to do that evolution. So each one of those costs uh, 50 candies to evolve. So it did require some 
so I'm catching, even if you were using pineapp berries for those, mostly which I was, um, it still required, you know, a hundred of those candies. So as you can hear, we're, see here, we're camped outside of an egg, getting ready for a raid to hatch. The raid hatch animation is pretty cool, and uh, I think it's interesting that they do that. There were lots of drowsies in the raids this weekend uh, for those increased spawns and increased shinies. If you didn't get a chance to see one of the shinies, I think Heather has actually caught two, but I don't think any of them ended up in this video. Uh, they're pink colored rather than yellow. So uh, we chose fighting type. We mistook uh, what the weakness was uh, for, for drowsy during this period, so we both set up with uh, fighting type loadouts. Luckily, it's a pretty low-level raid, and we were both at a level that it was not a big deal. Um, but yeah, all of these attacks are not very effective. Um, so there, there is some safety buffer that occurs when your level is high enough, and the raid level is low enough. But obviously, you want to pay attention to which types go with which Pokemon. As you can see, even both of us using not very effective attacks, uh, this raid is, is not going to last very long, definitely under uh, 50 seconds. We talked in previous videos about the uh, random number generator gods and uh, what seems to be almost types of players, like there might be some account or some number associated with an account type, uh, where I get way more rare candies than Heather does, and that continued through this event as well. I think I ended up with probably 10 more rare candies throughout the event, and I think she had one or two. So I'm not sure what process Niantic uses to determine which player gets which raid bonuses, if it's totally random or if there's some fixed scale, but that would be interesting to find out. So if you're catching raid bosses, one of the things you want to do is uh, make best use of your experience points, which means curveballs, means greater excellent throws. And if you can get it on the first throw, there's a bonus there. Uh, you can use those golden raspberries to increase your catch chance, or you can, if it's a, a lower level Pokemon, even use a pineapple berry and acquire more candy uh, for that. Actually, uh, Katie, we ended up uh, heading up to Pittsburgh a little bit, so some of the footage you'll see for the game, uh, we recently celebrated our first anniversary, so we headed up to Pittsburgh to play Pokemon and eat at the Hofbro House and stop at the Paper and Dice role-playing game store. So, uh, yeah, so that was definitely a fun trip. While we were up there, we were looking for some raids, but uh, the part of Pittsburgh we were in really wasn't conducive to uh, stopping and finding places to park. And uh, the stops in Pittsburgh were kind of scattered in strange ways across the campus. So if you look at the map, it may tell you uh, which areas are parks and which are not. So like this dark green area is a, a park area. Um, but there really wasn't anywhere for us to, to park well while we were there. So we did some walking around to the video game stores and mostly just made use of the psychic event to catch as many slow pokes and executes as we could. Thanks, guys. This is a slight resurrection of the, the Pidgey Patrol. Um, since mostly I've been using Pidgeys against uh, legendary and mythical Pokemon, I kind of just wanted to see how one would hang uh, at a, a lower level. Uh, so I was pretty pretty impressed. This guy did better than I expected. Um, we, we knew that it was not going to be a tough raid, so I was like, you mind if I threw a Pidgey in, Pidgey in here? And Heather was like, yeah, go ahead if you have to. So started off this particular raid with a Pidgey. The dying animations are weird. Like some of them, like they look really, really pained. Other times, they're just kind of making a silly face. But uh, here's another rare candy, uh, which I'm hoarding. So I think I'm up up over 110 now for those. Uh, I've been threatening to turn them all into Pidgey candies if I have to max out all of these 100 IV Pidgeys that I'm looking for, which uh, totally mortified Heather at the thought.
So yep, first throw curveball, get a little bit of an XP bonus. If you happen to be doing a lot of raids in a time period, it would behoove you to use an egg and get uh, more X, it's a double XP for that period. Um, and maybe a star piece, which is 50% more Stardust. So Stardust, you can see here, I have about 280,000 Stardust, which is, is a, quite a bit, um, not as many as some people who get to play a lot more. Um, but Stardust is the rarest resource in the game. Uh, it's the hardest one to come by. You have to expend it when you're powering up a Pokemon. You have to spend it when you're trading Pokemon. And uh, if you don't have it, you, know, you can't trade, you can't evolve Pokemon. And it is the hardest to come by resource. So one of the ways that kind of proves that, you can purchase uh, lucky eggs from the store. You can purchase Pokeballs. You can purchase revives, you can purchase all of these other you know, incubators to hatch like the, the eggs, like the 7k eggs. Um, but the one item you cannot purchase are star pieces. You only get those uh, through rating and as rewards. So not only is it a controlled resource, your ability to maximize what you do have is also limited. I've also been trying to hit up as many Whalmer raids as we can find. Uh, Whalmer also requires 400 candies to evolve into a Whale Lord. I don't have one yet. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure, fill out that Pokedex just like everyone else, and uh, you know, hitting up those raids definitely increases your chance to get candies. So Bulbasaur kind of doesn't get as much love, uh, or any of the evolutions like Venusaur, as much love as uh, some of the other starter Pokemon, um, but they can be super effective depending on who you're up against. So as far as, um, I'm actually trying to get several uh, Venusaurs ready to go, and uh, I think I only have one at this point. Um, but for battles like this against Whalmer, you can see all of those attacks were super effective. It's a plant type, and it's definitely a good one to have in your arsenal. We talked about uh, features we'd like to see in the game. One is a scroll bar for friends, just like there are for Pokemon. And one of the things I would like to see is to be able to flag a Pokemon as not a battling Pokemon. So. Uh, Heather was getting kind of annoyed that all of these Aggrons were getting chosen, and she's actually talked about getting rid of them so that the recommended Pokemon wouldn't choose them first. It would be interesting if you could just tick a box somewhere and say, don't suggest this one for raid battles. And that might allow people to tailor their recommended Pokemon a bit without having to use pre-made teams for everything. If you know that you're going to be doing a specific kind of raid for that week or for an event, you may be able to just move it around. Jason asks, uh, asks what about Victory Bell? Uh... I'm not a huge fan of kind of any of those plant guys. Uh, not from like a gameplay standpoint. I just don't really find them all that interesting. Uh, so again, oh, sorry, I have a choking bug. Okay, uh, I'm not a huge uh, fan of most of those plant type Pokemon. Sorry, one sec. We have a tiny dog named Frank. He's a Chihuahua, and they have this problem with a genetic problem called tracheal collapse. And it's a, a positional thing. If they're laying the wrong way, they just have a little trouble breathing. So we're just going to hang out with Frank for a little bit and see what he's up to. Uh, so yeah, not a Victory Bell fan. Sorry, Jason. If uh, you want to do a lot of raiding, you get one free raid pass a day, and you can get that by spinning a Pokestop. Or you can purchase raid passes. Or they also tend to come in the purchasable boxes. Uh, Chips ask if we're using a cheat to go where we want. No, all the footage is previously recorded from the last week. I just cropped out any of the travel time or anything that really kind of wasn't interesting to watch um, so that you guys don't see me either walking in town or setting my phone down and driving somewhere. So nothing spoofed. There's no cheats. Uh, these are all played in real time, but they're previously recorded. So. Heather mentions that Victory Bell usually isn't effective unless you spend millions of Stardust to make them hardy. And as we just finished talking about, Stardust is the uh, rarest resource in the game and the one that's the most difficult to come by. So yeah, as many Whalemers and Magikarps as we can come across trying to just grind through those 400 candies. Luckily, Whalemer is gigantic, so it's pretty hard to miss him with a Pokeball. It would be cool if you could keep these uh, extra raid balls. They're, 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 you don't use your regular stash of Pokeballs to catch raid bosses. They kind of issue you a number of these ones based on your participation. And uh, if you catch them and trade them, you actually can see that uh, uh, raid ball get traded, which is kind of fun. 
So if you're using a spreadsheet or a third-party app to keep track of IVs, the way that you do that is like as you saw here, I appraised that Pokemon, and you can get a feel for what the IVs are. Um, one of the things that I do is I then change the Pokemon's name to include the IV. That just makes the bookkeeping a little easier. If I know that I'm trying to get of a certain percentage IV, I can trade back uh, to the professor the ones that I'm not using. So this is an array, just a regular gym battle. Uh, there's three teams in Pokemon Go, so red, blue, and yellow. Uh, so you have, oh, what's that red one called? Well, it's Team Instinct, but uh, you also have Mystic, who is blue, and that's what Heather and I play as, and then you also have, uh, oh, no, Instinct is yellow. What is the red team? I, said, I meant that as a joke, but then I actually now can't remember what the team is. Instinct, Mystic... Hmm, I can't remember. Either way, uh, there tends to be some serious rivalry between the red and the blue teams. Uh, the blue and the yellow kind of seem to tolerate each other. Um, but, you know, you still have to tear, tear down their gyms and put uh, your Pokemon in there if you want to get those can, uh, coins for purchasing things in the shop. So one of the things that people... Ah, Team Valor, Jason reminds me. Thanks, Jason. So one of the things that people have sort of complained about are the egg events. So the 7K egg event, which is ending today, was a great chance to get a hold of some regionals. But some people have complained about uh, basically the eggs at all as ways to uh, elicit money from players. But obviously the company in question uh, has to make money and kind of deserves to make money for something that's fun. And uh, one of the ways that they do that is by selling egg incubators. So you can acquire regular ones occasionally. You have a, an orange one that has an infinite number of charges and you can use forever. Um, or you can get a super incubator which halves the amount of distance you have to travel to hatch that egg. So during the 7k egg event, some people were lamenting that, oh, it was just a way for Niantic to uh, sell more incubators, which may have been true, but I was able to get a Kangaskhan out of it, which I was pretty excited. I picked up a Mr. Mime and a Farfetch'd when we were abroad, so, you know, hatching those was cool, but not as cool as it could be, but I couldn't see any other reason, any other way I would have gotten a Kangaskhan in the near future. So the 7k egg event, I think, was a definite success. And if, you know, people paid for a few incubators to play the game, I think that's totally fine. Frank looks like he's doing better, so we're probably going to let him go. So the group that we raid with pretty frequently is mixed. There's one or two uh, Instinct players, a couple of Valor players, and the majority are usually Team Mystic. Um, but there's often some good-natured rivalry, rivalry. If you arrive and the gym is blue, uh, the couple of them will kind of, you know, drift off to the side, and then all of a sudden you'll notice the Pokemon start dropping out. So even if we're there to, to raid and we're waiting for a, a raid boss to hatch, um, still the teams are kind of, you know, uh, working at each other to acquire those, uh, acquire those gyms. So what's interesting is uh, having team play and having location-based uh, competition is something that uh, Pokemon Go brought over from Ingress. So there are two teams in Ingress, and they have metaplot reasons for existing. Um, but what you really need to know is that you have to stop at a stop, which is an Ingress portal, and then connect it to another Ingress portal and another. And three is the minimum. Of course, they can be more. And then you square away, basically... Uh, acreage, digital acreage, which your team then controls. So that uh, having that location-based competition for teams is definitely this something that they brought over from their previous game, although you're not really controlling territory so much as controlling time spent in the gym for coins. So it was interesting to see them take that idea and leverage it uh, in this different way. Uh, Arminius says that uh, she could go for Gen 2 and 3 regional eggs. That would be cool. So uh, the regional Pokemon... Uh, span the ge different generations that have been released thus far, and the 7k egg event was uh, only those Gen 1 regionals. So one of the neat things about the search feature that I kind of just recently uh, learned, you can say do a search for shiny and see all of the shiny Pokemon that you have. Uh, you can do uh, a search for a specific Pokemon's name or nickname, so if you have renamed one of your Chikorita's Pumpkin Spice Chikorita, like the one in the center of my screen there, uh, you could search for PS and it would bring up that Pokemon. 
you can also search for its type. So if you just search for grass or water or fire, it would show you all of those canonical types. If you search, use the at symbol, you can actually search for specific, uh, specific move sets. So if you search for uh, at dark, uh, it's going to show you dark type Pokemon, but if you search for at dark, it's going to show you Pokemon with dark move sets, which actually might be more valuable if you're building a team. If you use a plus sign and the Pokemon's name, it will show you all of the Pokemon that are in that evolutionary chain. So if you do plus Pikachu, it's going to bring up Pichu and Raichu as well, which is certainly neat, uh, especially if you're looking for Pokemon that you've lost or you're trying to search for things or seeing what you can evolve. Speaking of evolutions, you can also just search for the word evolve, and it will show you all of the Pokemon that you have enough candies for to evolve right now. The trouble with this, however, is that it will uh, it may show you uh, the first stage evolutions, and maybe you've been saving for that third stage evolution, and if you go through and you just use that evolve without really paying attention to what's there, you may end up uh, spending some candies that you were trying to save for some other purpose. Depending on which team you've chosen, these appraised languages are different. Uh, you can look those up online and they'll tell you the approximate IV uh, spread for that particular um, verbiage. For Team Mystic, the, the stuff we're looking for is, is a wonder what the uh, stat is and exceed. That's going to be the highest category. So one thing that's easy to remember for those middle stats, it will say X which is equivalent to, which is equivalent to, and that will tell you that all three of them are the same. So if you have is a wonder, all three are the same, and then exceed, that is a 100% IV Pokemon for the blue team, Team Mystic. Uh, hey, Doggo Man Guy, welcome to, uh, welcome to the stream. We're just looking at some Pokemon Go footage for the past week, and especially the special Psychic event, which was this weekend, including all of the Pikachus with hats that we could find. I tried to do a little bit better. Uh, I kept to think oh, maybe only six of those, the highest IV ones that I could find. One of the things that is both uh, a boon and a flaw is that um, if it's in a special event Pokemon, like a Pikachu with a hat, you can't select it. So if you're selecting Pokemon to trade back to the Professor, which I jokingly say go in the wood chipper, um, there has to be some way of converting those Pokemon you send that guy to the candies you get back. But anyway... So if you uh, long press on one of those, then you can select multiple Pokemon to send back in one go. You cannot do that for a special event Pokemon. Uh, the only thing, if you long press that, it will tell you you can't select event Pokemon. So if you want to send one back, for maybe it's low IVs or you just have 20 of them, uh, you have to go click it, go into its submenu, hit transfer. It's going to say, do you really want to transfer it? Yes. Sure. Yep. Transfer it. And so it's like a three to a four click process, um, which is much slower than being able to select them. So it would be nice if, uh, since we're talking about features that we'd occasionally like, if when you long pressed an event Pokemon, it would just give you a question one time in that setting. Do you want to be able to select event Pokemon for the next 10 seconds? Yeah. And then you could select them all and send them back, and then that would flip off. So you'd have to do that every time so you don't accidentally send back something you only have one of and will never be able to get again except by trade. Um, but right now it's a little bit too locked down uh, for ease, so it would be nice if they kind of loosened those reins a little bit. Uh, Arminius says the shiny drowsy. We talked about the, the pink shiny drowsy. I can't remember if there's footage of that in this, uh, pr this video or not. Um, I think, Arminius, you've gotten two of those from the event, right? So that's pretty cool. I have uh, gotten zero at this point, so I'm going to have to trade for one if I want. Uh, trading for shinies is expensive, unless you are set up um, as ultra friends or better. This is the Phantom of the Attic uh, RPG store in Pittsburgh. It's not far from the Cathedral of Learning, uh, if you head over to that section of town. Um, it's a really good video, uh, gaming store. They have setups there for minis. They have the largest in-person mini selection of any gaming store within reasonable driving distance from where I live. They do books on consignment as well as they purchase uh, used RPG books, and you can go through those and find out-of-print stuff. Um, as well as, of course, they have uh, modern new stuff. Uh, dice, cards, minis. It's, it's a really cool store. So if you get a chance and you're in that neck of, pit, uh, neck of the woods in Pittsburgh, stop at Phantom of the Attic. Right across the street, they actually have a comic book shop. Um, so depending on what your nerdy pleasures are, you may hit one or both of those. And it's a really good store. So if you see them, you can let them know that the folks from Morgantown, West Virginia, uh, sent you. 
So again, we're getting uh, some rare candies for these raids, and uh, I'm saving them up to use on a bunch of Pidgeys. Because, yeah, reasons. Uh, in addition to uh, being able to catch in increased ca um, spawn rates for the Psychic Pokemon, they also were uh, Psychic Pokemon event event specific uh, research quests. So there was one that was Evolve 3 Drowsy or Executes, and uh, there were all different specific researches. So as typical for Community Day, uh, there are special researches for that. So this was Heather and my uh, wedding anniversary. We hit uh, best friends, got 100,000 XP there. We didn't plan that. It was actually a surprise to both of us when it happened. Um, so on our way to the Phantom of the Attic gaming store, uh, we achieved the higher, highest level of friendship in the game, best friends, and unlocked the best friends medal, which was kind of fun. So yeah, uh, there's the Best Friends medal, and uh, the medals are, they don't really impact gameplay at all, they're just a, a fun thing to add to your playing of the game. And we've got to hatch those 7k eggs. If you're walking around town, you definitely want to make sure that you're hatching as many eggs as possible, uh, even if it's a North American exclusive that are radically abundant uh, if you live in this part of the world. And this one was wild caught. I didn't get. I wasn't fast enough on uh, the record button there. But this was the wild caught uh, slowbro, which helped me lock out the slowpoke evolutionary uh, tract. So. Uh, this player and I became uh, ultra friends during this period. So if you see I actually have a lucky egg counting down, there's 28 minutes left on that one. Uh, if you're using a lucky egg, which doubles the XP you get, uh, you can use that for events like friendship levels. So if you hop into your uh, lower left-hand personnel menu and swipe to the right, you will see your friends. You click on them, then you click on the friend level, and it will tell you how many days until your next friendship level. So if you're careful and you curate it, you can kind of plan with that person to um, open eggs at the same time and then open the gift that's going to push you over and you can get double XP. So if you noticed, Heather and I, for best, <clears throat> for best friends, I got the same XP award as this other player and I did for ultra friends. Um, so that is definitely something that you should do. If we'd known that was coming, I would have used the egg at that point. Um, and then it could have been a 300,000 XP day, which is definitely a good day for playing Pokemon. Uh, just as a point of scale, uh, catching a wild Pokemon uh, is probably around 100 to 160 XP, unless it's something like this, the first catch of the day. Excuse me, that has an XP bonus. So 300,000 XP, basically just for opening a gift or two, well worth it. Speaking of friends lists, uh, you can kind of curate your friends list. So a lot of people will give gifts to the people that they actually see, which makes sense because the higher your friend level, the more chances you're going to get um, at a raid boss to catch that raid boss. But it's also important to go and scroll all the way down um, to the people you're the least friends with and to build them up. Um, as you build those friendship levels up, that is basically just farming future XP. So. Uh, if you get them up to ultra friend level, that's an extra 50 or 100,000 XP, and that can really help you uh, move you through the level grind. One of the neat things from this period are the uh, spindas. There are eight different uh, facial patterns that go with them. Uh, Armenius mentioned that 300,000 XP is more than it takes to level up at some of the lower levels. Uh, so the spindas are pretty neat. They have different uh, patterns that go on their faces, and there are eight. There's many more than that in the console games. Uh, I can't remember what that number is, but it's really, really high. But in Pokemon Go, it's eight. So Again, it's just one other thing that's uh, fun to collect and try to find if you're uh, hunting through the game. So uh, a good way to raise friendship levels are to exchange gifts every day, to raid with that player when possible, and to trade Pokemon. Um, if you can do multiple of those things in a day, that's probably good. And then the game keeps track of days you've played with that player. That doesn't mean raw calendar days, that means a day you did something of game mechanical importance with that player. 
So here I'm just looking at through some of the different facial patterns. You can see this one's kind of clustered in a uh, SNES controller style. This one is the Panda uh, Spinda, and the other one is being called the uh, Howie Mandel because it has a bit of a goatee. So uh, that was uh, most of the footage from this past week. One of the things I wanted to mention before we go, uh, Community Day is coming up October 21st. It is a three-hour window at which you'll be able to catch many, many Beldum and evolve into Metagross. There will be a special move set, and that is coming up the weekend after next. So if you're a player who hasn't played in a while or you're a veteran player, you definitely want to try to attend your local Community Day events. You can see if you, there is a Discord uh, for your local area, or you can join the Silf Road website. Uh, if you have a Silf Road Community Day event, you can unlock badges for those events, which are little 8-bit octagonal badges that go on your profile, and those are kind of fun as well. Uh, the only one I've been able to collect for those so far is the Chikorita, because I pretty recently joined the Silf Road, but it can be a lot of fun. So the Psychic event was over this weekend. We saw Pikachus with a hat that Niantic dropped on us totally unaware. Uh, the 7K egg event is ending today, and we have a community day coming up, uh, not this weekend, but the next. So it should be an interesting month for October, especially with all of the Metagross. Uh, if you, catching a lot of Beldum is not easy to do, so we will definitely uh, see you then. Oh, Nick pops in and reminds me there's going to be a shiny Metagross. So uh, we will see, if we don't see you before then, we will see you next Monday for Poke Monday. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you later.